Stop the Killings All Resigned. CSOs tell Buhari as Ortam accuses El Rufai of misleading the president. And House on the Rock senior pastor Paula De Farassin calls out Nigeria's leaders. Nigeria has problems that are more significant than she ever has, and very exacerbated by the fact that we were not the 60 or 70 million, perhaps, around the time of the first civil war. We're now allegedly, I don't believe those numbers personally, 200 million. I don't, don't think that we've ever had a bona fide census in Nigeria. And that was also the complicity of the parents, the foreign parents of Nigeria. And many of these issues need to be dealt with unless the truth is unveiled concerning our foundational years, our amalgamation, our independence, our first constitutions, we will not get it right in Nigeria. Well, this is Plus Politics, and I am Mary Anna Kong. After what appears as a respite in society, organizations, activism in the country, a coalition of 127 CSOs petitioned President Buhari to, as a matter of urgency, stop escalation of insecurity in the sidelines. Uh, the Benin State Governor Samuel Autumn has named Nasser El Rufai as one of those that are misleading the president. He described the state governor as a sycophant a champion and a religious bigot. Now, anyone who does that for anyone who does not share the uh, ideologies that he does share. Well, joining us to have this conversation is Good Governance Advocate Shegun Shopitan and Chairman Civil Society Organizations River State and Nefa Judge Will. Uh, we also have joining us um, Barrister Victor Opatola. He is a legal practitioner. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for joining us. Thank you. I'm going to start with you. Um, I'm going to start with you, and Nefa. Um, of course, you and Shegu are part of these CSOs, even though you do not make up the 200, but 200 plus or 100 and something are uh, asking the president to step aside. And one would wonder where CSOs have been this whole time. One would wonder where CSOs have been while people were being killed in the Northeast, people were being killed in the Middle Belt, people were being killed in Kanu, in Plateau, in Benue State. One would wonder what, what, where these CSO organizations have been while all that's been happening in Nigeria has been happening. They seem to be sleeping and slumbering, but all, all of a sudden they are awake. What's been happening to the voices of the civil society organizations in Nigeria? Uh, I, I think that um, it's not correct that we have been sleeping. Uh, of course, uh, maybe you may say that um, these um, solidified joint action uh, kind of, or, or if you like, a threat. Uh, of course, I will be related to the issue that recently. Maybe uh, such a very strong voice, uh, maybe the others on time, if you say sleeping, or you know, that silence is not correct. Uh, I'm sorry, Nefa, just, just hold that thought. Just hold that thought. I think one of you has your television on. Please turn it off. It's conflicting with the sound here so that we can hear everybody loud and clear. Thank you. Go ahead, Nefa. All right, Shago. All right, Nefa, we lost you. Let me go to Shago. Shago, can you help us answer that question, please? Yeah, I'm here. I'm here. Um, Okay, so like like an effort was saying, you know, um, I don't think it would be completely accurate to say that civil society organizations have been asleep. Um, um, obviously, with a country as big and as complicated as Nigeria is, um, with as with the number of problems that we have, um, whether you want to look at it from the good governance perspective, uh, whether you want to look at it from the accountability perspective. Um, uh, infrastructure deficits, um, you know, our problems are myriad, the, the decline in values. 
um, everybody within um, this space of um, advocacy would have one side of the elephant or the other to try and bite. And I think that's what's been happening, right, in different ways. So you find people taking governments to court on, in lawsuits. You find people going to the National Assembly to um, do sit-outs um, in demanding for certain actions to be taken. Um, but what I, what I also believe is that um, in the course of history, there are watershed moments. Um, and when those watershed moments happen, they trigger um, events that could become, you know, a rolling uh, ball that, 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 that snowballs and gathers momentum. And I suspect that that is what you might be seeing now. Um, the reason is very simple. We can no longer be quiet. We can no longer do things as we have been doing them because the statistics are damning and the statistics are alarming. Um, I don't necessarily subscribe to those that would say, oh, the country is going up in flames, there is crisis everywhere. But look, what we have now is, is abnormal, extraordinary. The number of people that we have, at, at least the numbers are there, we can see it, both from the side of civilians, from the side of uh, you know, security agencies, the military, who are at the forefront of the world, the northeast and in some parts of the northwest, the police that are now under um, an unprecedented barrage of attacks, you know, and all of that. We're seeing um, uh, a phenomenon that is taking on um, a complexion that we've never seen before in our history. It looks to me like we're having a watershed moment where all of us in civil society are saying, look, we can no longer keep quiet. We've got to come together and force the hands of these guys in Abuja to do the right thing. So it's okay. not that it would be quiet. Everybody has been doing, you know, one thing or the other um, to address the various problems that we have. But it's, it's a great thing that, you know, at this moment, you know, in our history, uh, people have decided to come together. Because, you know, you can't do it alone. Okay. The government is simply too big. So a coalition like this is absolutely fantastic. Let me go back to Enefa. Uh, and I want to get, once again want to say, whoever has their television on, please turn it off. It, we're getting feedback and we do not want that so that we can hear you. You can't be listening to your TV and, you know, being on that same TV at the same time. Um, let, let me come to you, Enefa. So the civil society organizations are asking Mr. President to step down. Um, and, and they're also saying that they're going to boycott the um, Democracy Day activities. Um, I, I, and, you know, you're also speaking on these issues on the sidelines of the insecurity that we're facing and all of that. Um, but boycotting, um, in the, uh, sorry, Democracy Day and also asking for a protest of sorts. What difference do you think this will make? Because, I'm asking this because, there have been so many protests lately that has not in any way, um, you know, rustled or ruffled the feathers of the government. They have not in any way bulged. So what makes you think that if you boycott, um, you know, Democracy Day activities, if there will be any, you know, owing to COVID and all of that, um, what difference would it make? Well, um, I think that you are just, um, your, your, your own uh, government power, one goal and all at the same time. You know, and you accuse us of not being like we are, we are the wrong idea because uh, that, uh, some of us have a very secular way or the other. Oh, and if I... Uh, and if I, your network is very bad, it's well, unfortunately, we can't really hear you. There seems to be a lot of distortions coming from your end. So I'm going to have to move to Barrister um, Victor right now. I'm sorry, Anefa, we have to let you go and then we'll try to get you back on. Um, but but Barrister, Barrister Victor, let me come to you. Let's talk about the legal aspect of this. Um, they're saying that they want the president to be, um, to step down. They're asking that for an impeachment. They're also asking for um, the National Assembly to go ahead with the process of impeachment. Um, how easy is it to impeach a president? Walk us through it. Um, it's, it's not um, a walk in the park, impeaching a democratically elected president. It takes a lot of cumbersome processes. But the process is not the problem. The problem itself is the fact that the National Assembly is not willing to effect the process. The process stipulates that one third of the National Assembly 
can actually start the petition for the impeachment of the president. But the issue is not the, the, the process itself. It's just that the National Assembly so far, they prefer to, to do um, crocodile tears in the, um, in the House of Assembly, uh, in, in the National Assembly, instead of doing what they ought to do which is to kickstart the process of the impeachment of the president. But why should they so, kick, why, why, should, why, should they, why should they want to kickstart the impeachment of the president if they do not see the need to do that? Do you get where I'm coming from? If the president for them is doing what he ought to do, or, well, the situation in the country might be bad, but then maybe a couple of us are blowing it out of proportion, and that's why the National Assembly doesn't feel the need to do so. So why would they want to do it if they don't see what we are seeing or you are seeing? Okay, um, let us start from the fact that um, the call for impeachment of the president is not recent. It is an outstanding call. There has been a call for the impeachment of the president far back from 2017. So it is not a recent call. So there have been several, several instances where people in the National Assembly come to lament of the security situation in the country. Now, that aside, it is a reason to call for the impeachment of the president. Because one of the, one of the duty of the government is um, safeguarding the security and lives of its citizen, of a citizen. So as it is currently now, from the north down to the south, there has been recurrent issues of um, insecurity, even for the elite. So it is, it, it, it is not, it is not um, currently, it is not um, something that um, people in the National Assembly don't know about. They know about it. They've been coming incessantly to complain. There have been so many resolutions that have been that have been um, that have been made by the National Assembly to the presidency, which the presidency has totally ignored. Even recently, um, a, um, as of um, um, as of um, Senate member actually made the call that there are reasons why, if the president do not reach to their call, they will start an impeachment process against the president. So they know about all these things. It's their constituency. They know about it. So they are, they can't feign ignorance at this particular stage. Say they don't know about it because they do. Interesting. Um, if let's pretend for a second that um, at least sixty percent of the House of uh, the National Assembly, both the lower chambers and the upper chambers, decide that maybe because the president has refused to speak or has refused to do the most uh, to deal with the issue of insecurity, and they decide that you know they're going to impeach him, what? How long does this process take? Educate us. Um, it's it's okay. Let me just break it down. The first stage, it's like eight stages there about. The first stage is that one third of the members of the National Assembly, that's both the Senate and the House of Rep, one third of them sign a petition and forward it to the Senate President. The Senate President has the obligation to send the petition to the President and other House of uh, National Assembly members within seven days. Then, within 14 days after the call for impeachment by one third, but within 14 days, Two third of each house of assembly, each um, two third of the Senate and two third of the House of Representatives, they pass a, a resolution to investigate the call for petition. That is within 14 days. So if they, if if two third of them allows and um, agrees that um, that the, um, the 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 petition should be investigated, then within seven days, the um, Senate President will speak with the CJ, that's the Chief Justice of Nigeria, to constitute a seven-man panel, you know, a seven-man panel of people who are of good character, you know, who are not politicians, who are not legislators, who are not in the civil service. So this seven-man panel, they have the obligation to report back to both the Senate and the House of Representatives within three months and based on the, uh, on the rules given to them by the National Assembly. So within that three months, if they come back to give their report, if the report does not indict the president, the whole matter dies there. But if the report indicts the president, then the, um, the, um, the, the Senate and the House of Representatives, each separately, a two-third member of them will not act on the report. If two-third of them, that's the Senate separately, then the um, House of Representatives separately. If two-thirds of each house agree to 
um, the indicting report by the panel against the president, then that is it. Then the president stands removed. Hmm, interesting. But well, let's move away from that briefly because that's not the case right now. Let me come back to Enefa who's joined us back on the phone. Enefa, you have said that you were trying to say that, you know, the CSOs are doing, you know, their best to deal with the situation. They have been speaking, even though I think that they've gone to sleep. But um, as much as you want to go on a protest and you're also going to boycott um, the Democracy Day celebrations. How do you get the ear of government? Because that's the first challenge. A lot of people have spoken. Um, what makes you, and please, I am not being negative in any way, but I'm just being curious. What makes you more powerful than the former um, Senate president, um, Ayim Pius Ayim, who wrote an open letter? What makes you more powerful than a body judge who's spoken against this issue of insecurity, or a former president, or Bassanjo, or, um, Every other person who seems to be a high-standing member of society that has spoken uh, and asked for Mr. President to deal decisively with this issue and even speak to Nigerians, what makes the CSO so powerful and how do you think you're going to get the president's ear? Uh, well, what well, you just said, sorry, that uh, protest should be displayed by sexual offenders. The right to freely express oneself so, uh, what I mean is that, not at any point in time, it's just you. If you have any grievances, you, don't, you have the right to move out from your, uh, your, your. And match in the any point in time, or in the money. After the establishment, you have to look at the fact that you can take your answer. When for that to say that it is the only language they have the same political class. Understand. People are we are not less progressive, we have issued statements that have even been focused on all the smaller protests to get the attention of something. But yet there are two progress. So we are now moving in as a coalition, we are coming together to make a statement through mass action peacefully and non violent. Let me, let me, let, let me this way. The issues in at stake are political issues and can only go through political action and protest. This is a political action. Let me add here. And when the president of this country, Robert Gwari, was still in 2000, and he was denied, he, 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 he protested, and the police condoned all the area. He went to court, he hired 20 followers. And that was the year that we went to court. That's what the federal record said. Yes. That protest is a human right. It's part of our right. We have the right to protest. The police accused the court of our people. The court of our people was there. That in a democracy, that protest is an incident of every democracy. That is how the court further, further, Give death for the right to assembly and the right to expression and the right to protest in our constitution. So it is the only way we can fix this issues with our purely political is to express ourselves politically by way of protest to call all those who are saddled with responsibility to take action. For the fact, the president, the governors, the local government chairman hold a root shot that they call security vote. What are they doing with this? Thing? Part of our demand is that these resources should be redeployed to the security agencies directly so that they don't give this money as geek and tokenism to these security agencies. We are saying that all the resources that is due. The security agents, in terms of uniform, in terms of morale, in terms of promotion, in terms of better pay, should be made available. Should be made available. Okay. So that these things will be able to promote our society. We okay. are saying that the political class, of the governors of the president, should withdraw all public security acts from VIP, from the senator, from out of rep members. From 
assembly member. So can't tell us a lot of the challenge. We need to withdraw it and go to the security agencies in the street of, okay. of Nigeria. So okay. they can protect everybody. And not a very few people. They are doing that. Outside the president and his wife, the governor and his deputy, every other Nigerian, he who you, and if you are interested in security, should go and procure private security. Okay. The idea of hiring, abusing, insulting our public security agents, then we start to ask money, where they will be carrying back to their wives, where they will be carrying back to their children, where they will go and for them to stop. Okay, Nefa, I hear you. The political class. I hear you, I hear who you. Who are mostly... All right, NFA. I hear you. I need to. I need to go back to Shago. Um, Shago, you listen to Barrister Victor here talking about the fact that um, it's going to have to take more than just us wanting the National Assembly to impeach the president. So, I pose that question to you. Um, how do you intend to get the National Assembly to understand, to see through the prism that you're seeing? Because, like I said earlier on. They might necessarily not see what you're seeing or feel what you're feeling. So how do you um, get the members of the National Assembly to um, impeach if this be a thing that can be done? How do they um, initiate these proceedings? How do you get them to, in the first place, to understand where you're coming from? Are you going to go to the National Assembly? Are you going to occupy? What ways are you going to decide for to you know go through the dialogue? Are you going to... Um, lobby some members of the National Assembly to, um, you know, raise bills, whatever. What is it that the SCSOs can do? Because he has said that you have to have at least one third of each members of the lower and the higher house to, or the upper house to be able to do this. Um, but the situation that we're experiencing, is it that bad, bad enough to want to impeach the president? Mm, let me start from that where you where you just ended now. You know, I think we we need to uh, realize that, um, in as much as um, the motivating part of the trigger, you know, like let's call it the camel, the, the straw that broke the camel's back is the security problem. Is is the debt? You know, what I mean, when life itself is threatened, then what else is left? You know, as that whole saying goes, that where, where, when there's life, there is hope. Mm. So if we're all killed, you know, there's nothing to live for. So this is a trigger. But we must remember that the issues that are at stake go beyond just the security issue. We have a, a massive failure of governance at all levels and across all levels of, of, of government in Nigeria. We have a massive failure of governance at the federal level um, where the, the, the basic and simplest of the promises that were made by this president and his party when they contested in 2015 and that they reiterated when they recontested in 2019, they have failed at in varying degrees. Um, do you, is it security? Security, it's, it's obvious. I mean, the statistics are right there. Um, to over 2,800 people were killed in one quarter, according to a report that was just released um, last month, right? 2,800 people killed, um, died of unnatural causes where, where their lives were taken forcefully from them, right? That security, the economy, as we very well know, is the second tripod of this uh, uh, president's um, uh, promises. And we all know where the economy is now. Yes, we've had COVID. Yes, we've had the oil price collapse. But could things have been better managed to prevent this um, skyrocketing of inflation rates, skyrocketing of um, unemployment, um, complete uh, 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 stoppage of economic growth? I, I think the answer is yes. I think we could have managed the economy much better than we're doing right now. And then, you know, the, 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 the third tripod, which is corruption. I mean, we all know where we are with the issue of corruption in Nigeria today. It is very obvious that... Corruption is alive and kicking and thriving. So how exactly has this government um, fulfilled its promises and why should they continue? It, I think people need to understand that when we talk about a change of regime, it's not just about who they are. Uh, because, you know, the, 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 the federal government spokesperson was talking about the coup the other time and, and you know, scaremongering over that. They have to remember that there are other ways that 
regimes can be changed. Impeachment is one of them. You know, we elected these guys and we can withdraw that mandate via an impeachment process. So to answer your question, by the way, I have the mandate of my organization. This is, and it's very unusual where we have a unilateral, unanimous position from Act Network to say, yes, we support this action. Yes, everything that can be done should be done to see that we will attempt to impeach this president, even if it fails. And I think we all have to, you know, bear that in mind. We have to be realistic. It probably will fail, but we must try. The mm. first thing that mm. needs to happen is that um, I don't think we'll have any problem starting the impeachment process because, as you very well know, there's also a political slant to this, and the opposition, uh, the members of the opposition party will almost certainly uh, be more than willing to initiate that. They have the numbers. They, they've got their one-third, um, they, they've got more than one-third uh, of members of both uh, houses, right? So the um, um, starting the process will not be a problem. Where we would have a challenge is pushing that process through, compelling um, the mm -hmm. larger house, the two houses, to actually empanel that team that will investigate this president and determine whether he can be impeached or not. And I think that the only way to get this done is to force their hands. Okay. Mass action and protest has always been very effective, uh, a way of getting the attention of government people and with this coalition, um, Marianne, I trust me, the action that happened in 2011, um, 2012, with uh, President January 2012, I was a part of that action. It is this same group that is coming together now to say we want something to change. And they had better be taken seriously because okay. this will snowball. So the, 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 I think what needs to happen now is there has to be a massive uh, mobilization which is currently ongoing, so that at a determined date, we will have mass action, civil disobedience, and protest to force the hand of our politicians to get the attention of this president. You know, this disdainful, arrogant um, 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 uh, attitude where they completely ignore us and even lecture us and even insult us must stop. They okay. have to realize that we elected them. Mr. Femi Adishino, Mr. Alaji Garba Shehu, and the likes of them must understand that they are working for us. Their salaries are being paid by you and I. Okay. And they cannot lecture us and, and condescend and, 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 and speak down at us and insult us. Okay. That has to stop. So the only way to do that is for us to show them that we do have the power by mobilizing ourselves and standing up to say no more. Well, unfortunately, we're out of time, but I want to say thank you to Nefa George Will. I want to say thank you to Shegu Shopita and Marisa Victor uh, for being part of this conversation. Uh, I wish you the best of luck. Let's see how that turns out. Um, well, we'll take a short break. When we come back, Pastor Paul Adifarasin discusses the state of the nation. When we come back, we'll take a look at what he said during his sermon yesterday in church and how we as Nigerians can align. Stay with us.